There are three types of letters that Paul wrote. The first is personal, where he wrote to a person, like Philemon or Timothy. The second is general letters, like Ephesians, where he intended that it be passed around and read. The third was occasional letters, meaning something is going on that Paul needs to address. And we can tell from what Paul writes to them what's going on with them. Colossians is an occasional letter. He's writing for a specific purpose. Now we know that Paul had never been there, that Epaphras preached the gospel there and people got born again. And then Epaphras comes to visit Paul while he's in jail. So Paul sends a letter to the Colossians based upon the things that Epaphras had said to him concerning the people in Colossus. So it's very interesting. Paul commends them for continuing in the faith. He calls them faithful. He commends them for their love for each other. So there was a sense of family in their midst. And then he begins to pray for them. And I believe that what Paul is praying has everything to do with what he's relaying. What he's relaying in the letter has its roots in what he's praying in the letter. So he prays that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will. What does this mean? It's very interesting that Paul connects the knowledge of his will with an experience, being filled. This is imagery that is inseparable from experience. And Paul prays for this, that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will. What's a good way to understand what the knowledge of his will is? I think the best way to look at it is to know what is in his heart, to know what is in God's heart, to know the heart of God, God's desires. The second thing he says about this coming to know God's desires is with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. This is the Holy Spirit who is all wisdom, who is all understanding. So he's praying that they would have the experience of the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that they may come to know God's heart. Who else can unveil God's desires and what lies inside God's heart besides the Holy Spirit? He's praying that they would be filled with knowing what is in God's heart, what God's desires are from the Holy Spirit who is all wisdom and who is all understanding. The reason why he's saying this is so that, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. There is simply no way to walk worthy of the Lord without the knowledge of his heart without coming to know what is in God's heart by the experience of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to walk worthy of the Lord? Well, he goes on to explain it, to please Him in all respects. In other words, in every area of our lives, we do what we have seen to be inside of God's heart, literally living in such a way that God is deeply proud of you because you have aligned your life with His desires. This is bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in our knowing of Him or the knowledge of God. So how do we increase in our knowing of God? I have no greater desire in my life than to know Him. And I know you watching this video, it is your supreme desire as well to know God really and truly. He's showing us that increasing in knowing God is connected with this experience of the Holy Spirit that brings us into understanding God's desires. And as we understand God's desires, 
here we begin to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord that pleases Him in every aspect of our lives. This is bearing fruit and increasing in the knowledge of God. And look what's next when He says increasing in the knowledge of God. He says, strengthened with all power according to His glorious might. So we see God's power for God's glory. His ends accomplished by His means, His glorious might. In other words, it's only His might that brings Him glory. It is not the efforts of men, and it never will be. It is His might that brings Him glory. And we access, we receive this strength, this power, this might that brings Him glory through coming to know Him. And we come to know Him by the Holy Spirit, who is all wisdom and understanding, filling us with knowing what lies inside of God's heart, knowing God Himself. The first thing that we tend to think of when we think of God's power is the casting out of devils or healing the sick, and that's all there. But look at what Paul chooses to point out. According to His glorious might, for the attaining of steadfastness, literally, that we would endure, that we would persevere. But he doesn't just say, so that we can make it by the skin of our teeth. He says, this power is so great that you will not only endure, but you will endure with absolute joy. Then he says, also, patience, long suffering, being able to suffer with joy. What does that mean? Well, let's look at what suffering could point to in your life today. Wherever the old man is prohibited from taking the throne again when he wants to, this causes an inward bleeding, a suffering, if you will. And this kind of suffering people do not want to experience. But with the power that comes from God, His glorious might, we can suffer long with joy. So though power is casting out devils and healing the sick and these things, here's where the rubber really meets the road when you begin to see the character and nature of God on the inside, which is this, long suffering with joy. and giving thanks to the Father, deep gratitude. Oh Lord, I give you thanks with my whole heart. <laughs> and this is great too. Who, give thanks to the Father, who has done this? What? Qualified us. Stop trying to qualify yourself. It's a big problem in the church. God's work has qualified you. So we think we need to find a qualification. And when we work ourselves into a qualification, then we can have the share and the inheritance. No, no, no. We give thanks to the Father who has already qualified us. No matter where you're at in your life, based upon what God has done, you are qualified. For what? Sharing in the inheritance. So go in and experience this inheritance, enjoy this glorious inheritance in the saints, in light, the sweet fellowship. In light, light represents the fellowship of God. According to other scriptures, we see that God is light. And when we dwell in Him and have communion with Him, that this is light. So the inheritance is inside of this fellowship with God. So we'll stop right here. But as a conclusion, we see this, Paul is praying for the Colossians, based upon what he knows about them, from what Epaphras told him about them. And we know that what he is relaying throughout this entire book stems from what he's praying right here. And this is what it is, that they would be filled up. In other words, have no room for anything else. Filled up with what? Filled up with knowing what lies inside of God's heart. 
<laughs> in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. That's the Holy Spirit. So that we may walk in a manner that is worthy of the Lord. What does it mean to be worthy of the Lord? Pleasing Him in every aspect of life. This is bearing fruit in every good work. And this is increasing in the knowledge of God. And this increase in the knowledge of God is what strengthens us with all power, power for everything, according to His glorious might, His glory through His power, according to His glorious might, for the attaining of all steadfastness, patience, long-suffering, joyously, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. There are so many things inside of this inheritance. And praise God that all of the work to obtain it has already been accomplished through Jesus. So we go in and we experience it. A wonderful thing about Jesus' phrase, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you look at what the vine does, it does everything to supply to the branch. All the branch does is remain. All the work is done by the vine. So as we recognize His place and find deep dependency upon what He has done, then we begin to bear forth, forth fruit effortlessly because apart from Him, we can do absolutely nothing. I read a quote from Andrew Murray the other day. I wrote it down. He said, live in the total helplessness of one who can do nothing. Precious Holy Spirit, fill us with the knowledge of your will. Literally reveal to us what lies inside of God's heart. And here seeing this, we can know exactly how to walk in you and be empowered by you that we may increase in knowing you and attain to joy and thanksgiving in everything in life in your precious name amen god bless you don't forget to subscribe if you uh if you like these videos in the description box below I have a link to all the books that I've written. You can order them there on Amazon. Um, also, our worship instrumental is down there. Where you can download that right onto your phone and use it in the secret place. People ask me all the time what kind of camera I use. There's links down below. I also have recommended reading books down in the description box as well. Do me a favor and tell someone about our channel. There are hours of instrumentals and teachings, all for free. And we thank you for your support. Hit that like button and the bell so you can know exactly when we upload. It helps us so much. It's a large part of our ministry. And uh, we're grateful for all your support through this YouTube channel. God bless you.